Good to be back in the house today. We were, Dan and myself and Ryan were up on the north coast this last weekend up in Eureka area and just had a great time. It was wonderful. I don't know if it's just super loud up on the platform or if it's loud out there, but it's loud. If I maybe just bring it down on the monitors a little bit. Thanks, guys. I'm going to lower that, see if I can get the pop out of there. How are y'all? Good to hear it. Good to hear it. You look good. Even after a marathon 48 hours over the last... Wasn't that amazing? How many were here from... Yep. Heidi Baker. Wow. You know, she could stand up and read the phone book. And it wouldn't matter to me because of who she is in God and what she has done and what she's doing in the world. Uh, you just want to be in that atmosphere and be with those kind of people and let that rub off on you. It's just phenomenal. I think she did read the phone book last night. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, something like that. Oh, uh, let me tell you about the Wednesday night classes we've got going on. They started this last week, but you can still jump in. It's not too late. Uh, I'm doing a class on the Power of Your Life message, and we're, we're going to have a great time in there of discovering uh, our life message, how to put it into language so that we can empower it even more. And that's uh, in, the, in the hangar. At, uh, we st meet at 6.30 for just kind of some light refreshments, everybody in all the classes. And so come at 6.30, and then at 7 o'clock we break into the classes. The other two classes are the dynamics that define us, which kind of describes who we are as a church and kind of goes into our values. Dan McCollum will be teaching there this Wednesday night, so you can jump in on that also. Uh, if you wait another week or so, it's going to be a little late, so we'd encourage you to get in there this Wednesday night. This last Wednesday night, it rained so hard, I was just amazed at the amount of people that came out anyway. So come on out this Wednesday. Uh, we're going to pray for no rain. How much faith you got? <laughs> a lot? Good. And then Captivate which is uh, just a relationship class. It, 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 it's great for marriages. It's great for just human relationships and communication, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun class. And that's, I, where did they meet? In the family rooms upstairs in that building. And then Dynamics meets in the upper room, which is the top room over at this end. So that all starts at 6.30. The class starts at 7. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was amazing. I mean, that was just absolutely incredible. You don't know how much that encourages the speaker when you do, you know. <laughs> I need my Bible. Ryan, would you mind bringing my Bible up for me, please? Thank you. I'm kind of old school, you know. I like to have it in my hand where I can read it and open it and listen to the leaves of the Bible move, all that kind of stuff. I like that, but, but it's good on the phone too. It's good on the iPad or the whatever, the Google Pad or the Home Pad, whatever. All right. Uh, oh, hey, listen, I want to thank our teams for this weekend. They were phenomenal. They serve so well. We got so many compliments from the uh, Iris team uh, for video, coffee shop, the bookstore, ushers, security, custodial. I mean, this place was a wreck last night. And there were, you know, hundreds of other seats in here. And all kinds of things were different than what you see right now. And our custodial crew just jumped in and they did it. So I really thank him. Cleaned the bathrooms and vacuumed the floors and, and made it nice for us here today. So I really want to give props to the team that we have here. They serve so ex exceptionally well. And a lot of that has to do with the leadership that, that works with them. So we just thank you for that. Uh, listen, we also have deeper school starts this, the end of this month, the, first, the last Wednesday of this month, and it's all on identity, and, and you'll have an opportunity if you get into deeper. It's a 13-week course plus a Saturday, and on that Saturday, Dan is going to be doing his uh, Heart Dream School, 
and so whether or not you get into deeper or not, you want to participate in that, you want to come to that. Um, but identity, you know, two most important things we think about is who God is and who we are. And those two things regulate everything in our life. They make our decisions for us. They, they cause us to have the atmosphere around us. And so we talk about who God is last semester, and this semester is who are we? Who does God say we are? Turn to somebody and say, who does God say you are? That's our discussion this morning. That's all my preaching. Now we're going to just go into small groups and we're going to discuss that thing. No, no, I guess not. Oh, that's my class. We do that in my class. That's right. It's interesting. Mark brought up that 22 years ago and two days ago, this weekend, uh, we came back from Pensacola, Florida. The four of us that went were so radically changed, you, you would not have recognized us from the time before that. And then it took about 10 months on a Saturday night in a men's retreat where God showed up and just devastated us. And that Sunday morning, I came back, I came back that night, Sunday, that Saturday night, because I was wanting to be back here on Sunday morning. And we got here on Sunday morning, and it, it ignited. And we absolutely have never been, never been the same. And very thankful for that. Uh, this morning I had, uh, I had a well-planned out, thought out, prayed out, studied out. You know, I believe Scripture says, you know, it's good to study the Word. You know, and I do that. I, I, I am intentional about that before I stand before you. And so I intentionally do that. And, and I actually had two messages ready to go this morning. So I could have a choice, you know. And then Jehovah Sneaky in the middle of the night, about four o'clock. You would have liked the other one. It was fresh. It was fresh too. You know, I always talk about like prophetic painting, you know. Well, if, you know, prophetic preaching, prophetic painting. If you, if you paint it before the service, it's not prophetic. There's not a pull date on those things, you know, it's like, <laughs> use by date. <clears throat> Thank you, Jerlene, for giving me that opportunity to get on my soapbox for a moment. But it was something that, that uh, God really did want me to share this morning for those of us who are here. Um, and so I, uh, it, this, is, this will be a little sloppy. And we'll just go for it and, and see where we go. And it won't be very long, um, I don't think. Okay. We now know what long is. <laughs> but as I said, it's like the first night, you know, we're here and I'm, I'm just, I'm absorbed in this thing. And I realized, you know, it's, it's 1030. And I didn't realize that if, if I hadn't had to go to the bathroom so bad, I would have stayed for more. <laughs> I know, Deb is about, Deb's going. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's what I felt like the Lord was saying to us today. He says, I want, I want you, I'm going to read some of this because as I, try, as I heard it, I want you to make an offer to the people. And it will mean different things for each person. And it will be applied in different places in their lives. And so this is absolutely not homiletically correct. My, my homiletics teacher would be shaking his head like I thought I taught you better than this. Like my wife is doing right now. I, <clears throat> So let me give you scriptural context. This he would like. John chapter 6. In, in John chapter 6, Jesus is talking to a large group. Well, it's the feeding of the 5,000, the first part of the chapter. And then as you go on, uh, Jesus and his disciples leave, and the crowd still t follows him and finds them. And, uh, and, and they say, where, where have you gone, Jesus? And Jesus didn't answer that question. He, you know, he always answers the question we should have asked. Right? So he starts talking to them, and he, and he really gives them hard things for them not only to understand but to receive. 
So he talks about the fact that he is the bread of life and, and that it, unless they eat of him, they can never have eternal life. And, and this just, you know, was confusing and difficult and was more than they bargained for when they started following Jesus. It's a large, very large group of disciples at this time. And then we get to verse 66, and after he's talked about these kinds of things, and verse 60 says, except from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, here's the offer. And I'll say it the way the Holy Spirit said it to me. It may not make sense to what I just read, but I think it does. He said, there is a crowd and there is a cloud. And we get to choose today which one we're going to follow. There is a crowd and there is a, there is a cloud. And we get to choose today who we're going to follow. Now, it's, I believe that there's, in some of us here today, there are places where uh, we have to make this decision. 22 years ago, we made a decision, Deb and I, Mark and Tim, we made a decision that we were going to follow the cloud. As a church, we made a decision that we were going to follow the cloud. And that was not a, just a one-day thing. It was, it was now going to be our life. But in that process of 22 years, up to this day, there are always tests of that resolve. Okay? And so there, there's places in our life where we can tend to fall back into the crowd or we can tend, you know, to forget, to realize we're not, we're in the crowd. Just suddenly, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, in, I'm crowd, not cloud. So let me, let me define those terms a little bit. The crowd isn't really people, though it's full of people. And, and I, I got to say this right off the top, God loves the people who are caught in the crowd. If he didn't love those people, we wouldn't be here today. Okay. So that's, that's bottom line. The crowd, the crowd is where the status quo is worshipped. The crowd is where uh, religion is priority. Human reason prevails. The, the, the crowd is where doubt is actually a value. It's actually a value. And it's taught as wisdom. Hello? Hello? It's a place where, where we use confusion to excuse our not moving. Because as long as I can just say, you know, I just don't, I just don't know. I'm confused. We don't have to do anything. It's where peer pressure and intimidation is used to control. And there, there's a sense of safety and security in the crowd, Right? There is that sense, but it's a false sense of security, and it's a false sense of safety. It's where the traditions of man take priority over the counsel of God, and risk is devalued, and it's very reasonable. It makes sense. To our human logic, it's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's wisdom. Yet it is where we lose our life while trying to save it. It's where we hold on tightly to what we have while it slips through our fingers. It's where it seems right to, reject, to return rejection with rejection. To give hurt where there's been hurt. To ask for vengeance and justice when we've been injured. It's a place where we curse because we've been cursed. You know, it's bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. Just kind of twist the scripture a little bit there. 
Still here? <laughs> okay. I'm so glad I wrote this down. But the cloud, this is where faith lives. This is where his glory is experienced. This is what re required in the cloud is full abandonment to following Jesus. It's jumping off the cliff and not knowing where you're going to land. It's saying yes to God without condition. It's the cloud. It's where his glory rests. And it's where significance is placed above security. It's where we push, as, as Cletty Keith used to tell us, that we push all our chips to the middle of the table and we bet on God with no side bet in case it doesn't work out. So where the crowd is stuck in history, the cloud moves on into our destiny. In the crowd, we're orphans, but in the, in the cloud, we are adopted sons and daughters. What a difference. The cloud is an unreasonable place. It doesn't make human sense. It's absolutely unreasonable, and his love is unreasonable there. It overwhelms us causes us to be different people. It's unreasonable, but it's where we gain our life as we give it away. As we saw it demonstrated so beautifully over the last two days. Where we hold everything open-handed and we gain that which is most valuable because we're willing to give up absolutely everything else. But it's in the cloud where intimacy is found with our God. It's in the cloud. So the choice is there is a crowd and there is a cloud. And we get to choose. And we get to choose every day. There was a, there was a crowd gathering one day with Jesus and he was, that was heard of Jesus coming. And they all lined along the street. <clears throat> They'd heard of the miracles. And they were wanting what Jesus was bringing. And there was one man there who was blind. His name was Blind Bartimaeus. Interesting that he had a first name that matched what he was. And uh, everybody in that, everybody along there was there because, for a reason. They had other things they could have been do, do, doing, but they were there because they wanted to see Jesus. They wanted to experience what he brought. But it was interesting, there was only one man who was willing to cry out. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd told him to be quiet. See, the crowd doesn't want to be embarrassed. But those who seek the cloud, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We know what we want. And we want him. Second time, he cries out, probably louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And again, the crowd, feeling really embarrassed by this man. Don't you understand you need to be quiet? This is the traditional thing to do. So he just ramps it up. I love blind Bartimaeus. He says, what would you say? Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> Jesus responds to the man walks over to him and says, hey, you know, Jesus knew he was blind, all right? But he says to him, what would you have me do for you? <laughs> I, I think in that moment, it was wide open. What do you want? Half my kingdom, you know? And he's healed that day. Why? Because he chose the cloud and not the crowd. 
The crowd will always want you to stay right where you are, wants you to be quiet, wants you to fit in with everything around you that is status quo, that is, feels stable and feels secure, feels traditional. Not, it's not bad that, the, that some of those things exist in our life. We have to have some stability for our children, don't we? But it's what is priority in our life, the crowd or the cloud. Hmm. The, one, the woman had not been healed. She'd gone to all the doctors. She had spent all of her money. And the crowd says, you stay in your house because it's illegal for you to go out in the public. Jesus was walking by. And she could have yielded to the pressure of the crowd. Maybe ask for some finances from the crowd. Maybe, you know, talked about somebody else. Can you give me some more money? I need to go to some more doctors. Could have done all of that kind of thing. But she was seeking the cloud and not the crowd. And she went through the crowd at the, at the possible expense of being imprisoned. And she touched his hem and was healed. What's the choice? It's the crowd or the cloud. We get to follow one or the other. It was, Jesus was meeting in the, in the Pharisee's house and a lot of people gathered. It was like a, like a courtyard within the house. And it's beautiful, I'm sure it was beautiful. Pharisee was, was uh, concerned about public opinion, you know. So he had everything just right and had Jesus there and Jesus was there. But Jesus was reading the atmosphere. He was reading those people. He knew what was going on. And in walked a prostitute. Can you imagine the judgment that was in that room? The shame that was being put on her as she walked through that room. The crowd was screaming, though there may have been silence. Who are you? And what are you doing here? Doesn't this man know who this woman is? The Pharisee was just thinking it. Jesus heard his thoughts. Said, he who has been loved much will be thankful much. She goes and bows at Jesus' feet and she breaks the ointment and she washes his feet with her tears. And Jesus forgives her. See, this is the kind of stuff that's in the cloud. Adoption, forgiveness, healing, healing of everything. The crowd, this is the thing about the crowd, the crowd's really not interested. The crowd is just not interested, period. The crowd's not interested in bringing healing to that woman. They just want judgment, justice, right? Why do we ever live in the crowd? Still with me? I know I'm quiet this morning. I'm almost afraid of what I might say. No, no. <laughs> oh, sure. You don't have to live with it. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a woman, much like, much like that woman that came into that place with Jesus that day. And uh, she was, she ran a hostel that offered more than just bread and breakfast. She was Rahab the harlot. She met two men standing at her door, and they, she had heard all of the rumors around town that there was an army out there, and then she'd heard the rumors that there were spies in the town. She looked at those two men. She had to know that they were not, they were not from her city. They had an accent that the rest of them didn't have, right? 
said, we've come, can you, can you put us up? She had to make a decision in that moment. Her city, the crowd, would want her to give them up for some kind of false security. And she had to make a decision, is my destiny with where I, wa- where I am or is my destiny with these men? She had to make a choice, is it the crowd or is it the cloud? And she says, come on in. She puts them upstairs. She hides them. Then the soldiers come. Talk about intimidation. The crowd loves to intimidate. So there's this woman standing at the door with the soldiers of the king. And she has to once again make a decision. She has to choose. Do I go with the crowd or do I go with the cloud? Where does my destiny lie? And she tells them, no, they've gone. You might be able to catch them. They just went out the city gates. She hides them. Now listen, here's the thing about most of these stories. We know the end of the story, right? We know the end of the story. We know she has this wonderful life after this. She gets rescued. Her family gets rescued. She marries a Hebrew. She has a son by the name of Boaz. Come on. Gets into the lineage of, the, of Christ. She has all of that. But she didn't know that when she stood at the door. Sometimes we have to make a choice at the time. We don't know what the result's going to impact most of the time. We stood in Pensacola, devastated by the presence of God, said, we'll never turn back. We had no idea what that would look like. We didn't know what heaven that would unleash. We didn't know what hell that would unleash. We had to make a choice. Is it the crowd or is it the cloud? And that happens all the time with us, doesn't it? So she chose cloud. <laughs> Jesus landed on the, on the shore. I'm just going to tell a couple more. You okay? You with me? All right. Haven't bored you yet? Jesus lands on the shore, gets off, and there's a demoniac there. And he's being controlled by a thousand demons. You think you got trouble? He, he probably was raised in the city he's in now. Grew up in that city. People had expectations of him. And somewhere along the line, he made some choices and was invaded by demonic forces. And from that moment on, he began to destroy every relationship he had. They tried to bind him because he just would run through the streets and cause trouble and problems then and he would break the chains and now he's living in the in the tombs naked everything has been stripped from him literally and he sees Jesus and every demon in him is saying don't go don't do it don't go we know we know that man don't go But the word says that he ran to Jesus and he fell at his feet and worshipped him. He had to make a choice. The crowd of demons or Jesus. The crowd or the cloud. And he ran to Jesus. You know the rest of the story. Jesus cast the demons out, put them in the pigs. They all squealed and ran off the cliff. The crowd was angry because The crowd is not always happy when good things happen. (laughs) We found that out. But then the next picture is we see him in his right mind, dressed and in his right mind, sitting with Jesus. What you may not know is he was one of the greatest evangelists to hit that area. Because Jesus comes back later. 
And when Jesus comes back later, this, it says this man went and gave testimony throughout all of Decapolis, 10 cities in that, er- in that area, and it told everybody about Jesus. So when Jesus came back, that's why the crowd was there for the feeding of the 4,000. A lot of those people could say, I, you know, I saw the life change in that guy. And I want to know what this guy's about. Choose the cloud. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite stories, you know, is I love David. He's a lot like me. <laughs> I'm supposed to say it the other way around, I think, but it's okay. Um, David was a man after God's own heart. He followed the cloud. And I love the, the story of David and Goliath for a lot of reasons. Um, one of those is when he shows up there, here is a crowd of soldiers who have forgotten that they're soldiers. There is a king who's forgotten he's king. The crowd forgets their own true identity. And David steps into there and he chooses, do I submit to the, to the, the atmosphere of defeat Remember, 40 days, they've, they've been standing to go to battle, and for 40 days, they don't go to battle, they run. And now it's the 40th day, maybe the 79th or 80th time they've gone out to do battle, and Goliath stands forward and they run. That's defeat. And David steps into that atmosphere, and he has to make a choice. Do I take on the atmosphere of the crowd, or do I step into the cloud? And he steps out of the crowd that day and onto that battlefield and becomes king in that moment. He acts like a king, though he doesn't have the crown. You make an application to yourself? Hope you are. Joshua did a lot of wonderful, amazing things with the people. He took them into the promised land. But he comes to the end where he is gathers all the people together, and they haven't taken all the land yet. He just says to the people, listen, I know you. I know you can be a crowd sometimes. And you may choose to turn from God, and you may choose to not walk in his commandments, and you may choose to do all of that, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. That was more than a trite saying. That was an absolute resolve in his heart. I'm choosing the cloud over the crowd. If you choose this way, go. I'm not going that way. No matter what you choose, I'm not going. That's a crowd that I'm not going to be in. I want to be in the cloud. We give Peter a hard time, you know. He, he tended to put his foot in his mouth a lot, you know, said things that got rebuked for. But you got to give, give him some props. When Jesus came walking on the water, right? When Jesus came walking on the water and everybody thought it was a ghost and everybody was afraid, Peter says, look, if that's you, tell me to come. I believe Jesus' invitation when he said come was for anybody in the boat. Anybody in the boat. You can go. I had had a vision one day. I I have very few. I was standing with Ivan Tate on his property down in uh, Guatemala at the orphanage. I had this vision while he was talking. And I had this vision. I was was in a boat and I was out in kind of a lake or a body of water. And there were a lot of other boats. Some, Some people were swimming to the shore. Some were in the boats rowing to the shore and some were walking on the water to the shore. I was in my boat. Landed on the shore and there's Jesus and he says, I'm so glad to see you. I have been waiting for this day for you to come. It was just a smile on his face. It was just a wonderful thing. And then I just feel so good about myself, you know. Yep, that's me. And then Jesus said, but I do have a question for you. Then I go, oh, man, I've heard this kind of stuff before. Right? I have a question for you. Why are you in a boat? I made you to walk on water. I 
I said, well, you know, I, you know, I'm busy, stuff to do, people to take care of, you know, stuff to eat. Made all kinds of excuses, and he just, he just smiled. He said, you know better than that. You're to be a water walker, not a boat rider. So we've got, to give, we've got to give Peter some props because he could have stayed with the crowd in the boat, people Jesus loved, but that he was inviting all of his disciples into a new dimension of the supernatural, a new dimension of seeing what God can do through their life. And he's doing that for us all the time. He's inviting us. He's saying, come, 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 come. The cloud is a place of invitation where he's inviting us to come and step into fresh dimensions of grace and of joy and of peace, the, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, great dimensions of the gifts of the Spirit, greater dimensions of the supernatural in and through our lives so that we really do impact the world around us. He's inviting us into that. Everyone in this room, not just the preachers. You get that? Not just the preachers. I realize we have a bigger Holy Spirit than you do. <laughs> but you still, no, nah, you know I'm teasing. Same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus, that gave Jesus the power to do every miracle, to be who he was, to go about doing good, rests in us. Same one. Same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. All right. So, we have a choice to make. The crowd or the cloud. And Father, I just pray right now that you will pinpoint the places in our life where you're asking that of us. You would not have woken me at 4 o'clock this morning when I really needed some sleep. You would not have done that had you not a point, had a point for the people in this room, including myself. So point it out to us by your Holy Spirit. Reveal to us the place where we have a choice to make. 22 years ago, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that, I woke up early in the morning and the Lord, Lord asked me something that he brought to my attention again this morning. He said, I asked you a year or so ago, I'm going to ask you again, are you willing to risk it all again? The cloud is an amazing place, but it'll cost you everything. Are we willing to risk it all again? See, the crowd feels safe, and the cloud doesn't. The crowd feels safe, but the cloud doesn't. We should love one another in a way that we feel safe with one another, but we should never believe that he is going, we're always going to feel like this fuzzy, you know, God's never going to test us. Yeah, you will. Holy Spirit's a gentleman. Uh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> He'll never make you do what you don't want to do. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't feel safe because it's not safe. It's really not. The crowd feels reasonable. Wisdom. But it's man's wisdom. The cloud doesn't feel reasonable. <laughs> And he will ask of you unreasonable things so he can do unreasonable things on your behalf. The crowd requires absolute, absolute obedience. I'm just giving you the fine print at the bottom. Radical obedience and commitment, but it offers an unreasonable potential for the above and beyond what we could ask or think more than we can dream of. It's in following the cloud that we, we gain a reality that's greater than our dreams. That's a wonderful thing. So what is the specific thing in you? 
worship team, why don't you head up here? A glorious day. Glorious day. Okay? Because it is. It's a glorious day. Let's just stand up. We often give invitations at the end of our time of speaking, but the Holy Spirit's already invited you into something. It's now your time to respond. And whether that's to fall on your knees, whether it's to come around these altars, whether it's to just simply make resolve in your heart, don't chicken out. Don't chicken out. If you're here this morning and you want to give your life to Christ, you've been in the crowd too long. You've been dominated by the crowd. You've been destroyed by the crowd. You've been put down by the crowd. The crowd has tried to hold you and hold you and told you all the reasons why you should never come to Jesus. Today's your day. Today's your day. Don't chicken out. It takes courage to respond to whatever God is saying in your heart right now. And I do believe there is physical action you need to take. We see it in Scripture over and over again where Jesus has them do something to receive what they want. What are you going to do? Follow the crowd or follow the cloud? Oh, there are so many times I stand in this place and I think, oh, I wish I could make a decision for them. But the only one I can make a decision for is me. I sat and I listened to Heidi Baker the last two nights. And I was once again challenged to give my life away, fresh and new. Just to say one more time to God, God, it really does all belong to you. Everything that I am, everything that I have really does belong to you. And I want the rest of my life to count. I want it to count for the kingdom. I don't know how many more years I have. I'm what, in my 40s now? And when I got here, yeah, when I got here, had my 40th birthday here. Wow. Whatever's left of me, it's all yours. Are you willing to risk it all again? You risked it all when you said yes to Jesus in the first place. Are you willing to risk what you have now? You know, I was talking to a young man about a year and a half ago, and he was just having such a hard time making a decision. He felt like God was calling him to a place, and he said, I just, it's just so hard, so hard, so hard, so hard. So the problem is you, you used to be a lion, now you've become a pussycat. You've become domesticated. And when before you didn't think you had anything to lose, now you actually think you have something to lose and that's what's making it hard. The point is we, we don't have anything to lose. We think we do, but we don't. So what is the choice God is putting before you today? What do you want to do about it? Don't chicken out. Wherever you've become domesticated, just say, God, stir up the lion within me. Stir up the lion within me. Guys up top, can you put the words up there? Glorious day.
was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn The kingdom of God is an exchange place. It's a place of exchange. You exchange your sorrow for his joy, right? Your sin for his righteousness. You trade your place in the crowd for your place in the cloud. Living in between those two things is not a good place to live. We were in, in Hawaii several years ago and we were getting out of the car going to the beach right there and there was this family got out of there and, and they were Italian we knew they were Italian because we heard their language and they were talking they were all excited about going down and, and getting in the water and they had their snorkel gear but it was obvious they didn't know what to do with their snorkel gear and we watched them we knew we knew this was going to be fun right we knew this was going to be fun so we we walked down with them and we, we sat near them on the beach and watched them try to put on their gear, right? So they, they put on their snorkel. They're, they're like 20 feet off the water, you know, on the beach, away from the water. And they put on their gear, they get their mask down, their snorkels in their mouth. They put their fins on and they try walking down to the water. The father of the house was the guy who was going to show him how to do it. And it was obvious he didn't know what he was doing. Okay? So we knew it was really going to be fun. So the, the younger ones wanted to just go run out and get into the water all the way into the water. He said, no, no, no. 
we stand here because they, they realized they had to take off their fins to, to walk down the beach. So they had taken off their fins. So no, no, we're going to stand right here and put our fins in. They're just right where the breakers break. Not all the way in, not all the way out. And so they all try to put on their fins right where the breakers break. And they all get tumbled over and over again. We're laughing so hard on the beach we couldn't contain ourselves. The halfway place is a dangerous place. You get tumbled by life and you won't have anything to hold on to. Either get out there and swim where the snorkel and the mask and the fins do some good or stay up on the beach, stay in the crowd. It's time for an exchange. So let's declare this over our lives right now. We're exchanging any place we are in the crowd for the place in the crowd, in the cloud of God. Everywhere. Let's do it. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, and I went out of that grave. fairly new to the mission, would like to meet the leadership of the mission, will be out in the cafe. There's also a prophetic ministry over here. Those that are in prophetic ministry, you might as well head that way. Those of you who are part of the, the prophecy teams, and if you would like a prophetic word this morning, you can do that in just a moment, head that direction. I think it's interesting, 22 years ago and two days, ago, and two days 
we started a process, we started a journey. The, the number two means union and verify, this is a verification of facts by witnesses. It's what it means in scripture. Verification by witnesses of the facts. Where two come into court, they verify the facts, it becomes a thing. Here's the deal, if we, if we say yes, we said yes 22 years ago. If we say yes now, it's two witnesses. We're, we're doomed. We're doomed for glory. So, uh, and if you say yes to, will you risk it all again? You, you are saying yes. You are saying amen to his yes. Right? So here's my prayer over this house. Father, yes and amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love being with you. Thank you for your time this morning. God bless you. Let's go ahead and hit that again. Come on, isn't this great? We're going to sing it again, but we're going to say, I ran out of that crowd into your glorious cloud. Because I was breathing, but now alive. All my failures, all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb, it was my tomb. Till I 